This is The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. A half a billion people around the world experience severe freshwater scarcity all year round, while four billion people on the planet currently experience freshwater scarcity at least one month of the year, says a new study. With us to discuss these staggering new numbers is one of the authors of the benchmark study that is titled Four Billion People Facing Severe Water Scarcity by Arian Hoekstra and his co-author Mesfin Mikonen. Arian Hoekstra is professor in water management at the University of Twinter in the Netherlands. His latest book is titled The Water Footprint of Modern Consumer Society. It explores the full water footprint of consumer goods. Thank you so much for joining us, Arian. Yeah, it's a pleasure to me. Arian, so these are astounding numbers, 4 billion. Two thirds of the world's population are experiencing freshwater scarcity. How did you come up with these numbers? And what was the previous study that a lot of people are referring to that overlooked the uh, gravity of the problem? Now, in the past, uh, studies always looked at the annual water consumption and the annual water availability. But this hides, obviously, the fact that the water availability and water demand are highly variable within the year with water scarcity occurring only part of the year, but being very severe part of the year. So what we did is we looked at the water footprint, the, the water consumption of different activities, including agriculture, industry, also municipal water use. So the water footprint of different activities uh, from place to place at a high spatial resolution, res resolution, but also from month to month. And then for every place, we compare the water footprint, the water consumption to the water availability which shows scarcity from month to month, uh, place by place. And uh, so in your study, who is experiencing the worst case scenario in terms of water scarcity, access to fresh water? Now you see uh, some places have only one month per year severe water scarcities, but other places two months, three months, up to even full year. Now, what we see is that most of the people facing severe water scarcity live in India and China, but there are also uh, many small countries that uh, face severe water scarcity uh, year-round, like, uh, like Yemen, for instance, or other countries in the Middle East. Uh, so those people, they, um, they have really the problem of, of water supply, particularly to uh, uh, agriculture because for drinking we don't need so much water so water scarcity primarily translates to uh, the risk of, uh, of shortage of food. So can you talk about the main drivers of water scarcity what is causing it is it climate change is it population urbanization what's the cause? Uh, primarily it's population growth plus the fact that we consume more and more water uh, per person and the latter is because we uh, have different diets nowadays more and more meat in our diet and a meat based diet is more water intensive than uh, a diet with uh, low meat consumption and also we uh, consume more and more biofuels nowadays uh, those we produce and also require a lot of uh, land and, and water resources so the population growth plus the increasing demand for water per capita drives water scarcity. But on top of that, we have climate change, which means that particularly in dry areas and dry periods of the year, we expect reduced water availability. In this way, we see even enhanced water scarcity in those regions that are affected by climate change. Now, Arjen, how did you conduct the study? What was the methodology? Uh, we used an incredible amount of data and then an, uh, a coupled model to, uh, to estimate both water use and water availability. So you can imagine we use uh, maps uh, where crops are grown, uh, when and where they are irrigated. We use climate data like precipitation and temperature and uh, soil data and all this to estimate the, the water uh, use uh, in, uh, in agriculture and irrigation. But then we also use population density maps and data on industry to know uh, where is the, uh, 
the water demand of, of people and, and industries. And all that water demands we aggregated from place to place and then uh, compare the total water demand in every place to the water availability, which depends on, on the precipitation minus the evaporation, and this is then the amount of water that is available for agriculture industry and households. So, Arian, the numbers that the UN is referring to is a much lower in terms of water scarcity and how many b billions of people are affected by shortages. Uh, what is the difference between your numbers and their numbers and why? Uh, the earlier studies, they, they looked at the uh, annual statistics on water use and uh, water availability, which hides the severity of the issue because generally water scarcity is not full year round, but only during a specific period, but that can still be very severe. So uh, the previous studies, including those cited by the UN, um, they, they show a kind of, of annual average uh, of, of people having severe water scarcity. Well, we show it really month by month and show that 4 billion people live in areas that have at least uh, one month of severe water scarcity in a year. Right. So, Arian, what's the solution? What are you recommending as a result of your study? Now, we have a, quite a, a different number of, uh, of recommendations for both governments, companies, investors, consumers, because we think that uh, all those different uh, people and organizations uh, will uh, be involved and have some responsibility. Governments, for instance, have to formulate what we call water footprint caps per river basin, per month, in order to ensure that water footprints don't go beyond what the sustainable level per basin and per, per month. We think that uh, companies should know what is reasonable uh, water use per product. So we propose water footprint benchmarks by product based on best available technology and practice. So the companies can set reduction targets for the water footprint of their products and in this way help to solve the water crisis. Uh, we believe that consumers have to kind of reconsider their consumption pattern because particularly uh, meat consumption uh, strongly contributes to the water demand worldwide and can be reduced by eating less meat. And finally, investors uh, will be important because generally investment decisions are being made without considerations of the impact on, on the water scarcity situation. Well, nowadays, climate impacts are being incorporated in investment decisions. We believe that also the impacts on uh, global water scarcity need to be incorporated in those kind of decisions. All right, Arian Hulster, I thank you so much for joining us. And we will provide a link of the study uh, below for anyone who wants to uh, get more of the details and recommendations you provide. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.